Hey everybody, it's Party Elite with a beginner's guide to Total War Warhammer. When campaigning, you'll typically, depending on your faction, spend a lot of your time trying to capture settlements. When you do manage to win the battle for a city, you're presented with a few choices that determine the fate of said city. Unless you're a crusader visiting Constantinople, this can be a tough decision and possibly even confusing. The most common options are Occupy, Loot and Occupy, Sack, and Raise, and you will sometimes get the chance to subjugate a people as well. At a quick glance, it's easy to tell what these options offer from a mechanical perspective, and it's important to remember that regional limitations do apply to what your race can occupy in any way, and certain behaviors are faction-specific, such as Awaken Tribe, Raise and Defile, or Loot and Raise, etc., so more might be inbound. This guide is for the most common options, two types of occupation, sacking, and raising. Occupy means exactly that. Kill as little as possible, damage as little as possible, hoist your flag above the city, and claim it as your own. Loot and Occupy means you're willing to give some leeway to the as little as possible bit and wouldn't mind some extra money to come out of the occupation. Sacking a city involves taking as much of its wealth as possible and leaving it to its fate, and raising a city involves burning it to the ground, people and all. But beyond that, there is a strategic layer behind this decision as well. Only occupy territory that you can defend with confidence or that is needed to complete the conquest of a province. There are a few things worse than stretching your empire too thinly. When you reach too far and too wide too quickly, you will collapse inwards from multiple fronts, and the bigger you get, the harder you will fall. The loss of time and life taking a city only to have it fall to the enemy or rebellion shortly thereafter is tremendous, and in these scenarios, you should ignore the option to occupy. If you're in a position to defend this newly captured territory, then you have to decide between a simple occupation and looting and occupying. When making this decision, you must consider your ability to defend the city and the province as a whole in an entirely different way, through public order. Public order is crucial to any lasting campaign and can be maintained using buildings and military presence, etc., a topic for another time. But if you're not ready to take the hit to public order, don't loot. Also don't loot a city whose buildings will need to be repaired, the cost of which might outweigh your earnings. If you plan on demolishing the buildings anyway, and you can handle the public order situation, go ahead and loot and occupy. Next up is the option to sack. Simply rob a city of its riches, smash up its buildings, and leave it in a shattered state. This is a great way to use an enemy city as a little gold mine. Sacking is great for when you need quick funds, especially if you can't hold the new territory, and it can also cripple the enemy if you damage some essential buildings. At times, you might want to sack a city just for its economical benefits without any desire to expand in that direction at all. Finally, the option to raise lets you completely destroy the city without taking or leaving anything behind, as I mentioned earlier. While this doesn't seem to give you any benefits beyond satisfaction, it can actually help cripple the enemy. If you raise a city, provided you are the city-dwelling type of faction and the city is in territory you can own, you can recolonize it. If you want to keep a city away from the enemy, but can't afford to hold it or defend it, you can raise it. Prevent the enemy from gaining the resources it might provide, militarily and economically. Force them to venture out to recolonize it if they are desperate for what it supplied, or push onward without the need to invest in the newly conquered city. Alternatively, pull back after having created a buffer zone between you and the enemy's closest recruiting center. Raising a city can add distance between your borders and the enemy's actual response centers, and can help you change directions during a war without worrying about immediate responses. As your territories expand, these decisions become more crucial. Expansion isn't always about conquest and ground gained. Sometimes it is about the spoils and ground not given. You need to decide what is best for your borders. The desire to constantly see your realm grow is palpable, but at times you must resist this desire for a strategic upper hand and that's what being a great general is about. For more tips and tricks, subscribe to this channel, and if there's something you'd like to see covered, let me know in the comments below.